performing good and uh, it can incur you the loss okay so those two three one seconds delay like seconds milliseconds delay can make you revenue loss in terms of billions or crores right so that's why the performance testing is very critical and there are a few examples of failures like us based airlines computerized system also failed to meet some standards back in november 2009 right so this is like why performance testing is always necessary one have to ensure okay how its system is performing before it is going live okay so there's a just a uh, like a factor and a standard like business performance begins to suffer at 5 point seconds of delay in response time of web application and 3.9 for critical application okay so that is like why performance testing is important okay so next like the performance testing if we talk about performance testing so performance testing is a very vast process and it contains number of things and it uh, it requires different teams to work together like development qc sys admin right and architects so definitely all have to work together to ensure okay the performance is of the system is very good right so let's talk about first classification of performance testing that is load testing okay so load testing is basically testing your system against your defined system capabilities okay now let's say your product analyst and your business stakeholders they have clear picture okay we want our system to support 500 virtual us users concurrent load okay so now when you will be running this concurrent users okay and they want okay your average response time should for login or other business transaction that should be less than one second so when you are testing your system against this 500 users configuration and ensuring the time is should be less than this so this is called your load testing like you are testing against your defined system capabilities okay now similarly comes your stress test stress is when you are stressing your system beyond its capability let's say now you are product want your uh, stakeholder want okay we want to see how it will perform when there will be a some like big billion day sale or something like that okay so that is your stressing your system beyond its capabilities so that is called stress test right now there is a again one test called soak or endurance test okay so this is a test that is performed to ensure like how system will be like in this you can take the configuration as 500 or 800 users or like some some closer to your uh, sls and you in this we have to extend our load test for up to long duration let's say 8 to 10 hours or 10 to 12 hours so this test is to is performed to check systems stability over the period of time let's say if 800 users are running on your system and it is running for let's say long duration so what are the what are the bottlenecks or uh, bottlenecks or drawbacks in your system so those things get disclosed in this type of test so let's say if there are some memory leak release memory issues like memory can be leak also some objects are taking they are consuming the memory they are not releasing so that is called memory leak in performance engineering okay so those kind of issues or let's say database connections 
getting terminated over the long time so those kind of issues are figured out in these kind of tests okay so similarly there is volume testing so let's say you started your test against 10 gb of database now your system is getting expanded it uh, you perform the test again 10 gb collect the merits now your database size got increased it's 15 again you validated your test then 30 gb and so on till like it's increasing and you're performing your test against the increasing volume so that is your volume testing right so next is spike testing okay so spike testing is let's say now you have to model your low test or your as you know in your production like there is 500 concurrent users load in one initial one hour then similarly in the next hour that load getting reduced to 200 users or 100 users again it's spiking in next hour okay and similarly you observed in your production log okay on weekends there is a drastic change in the user pattern so now you want to devise that pattern like users are increasing you can see my screen like this is spike your users let's say your users increase at till this point now next in next time they get increase decrease okay so in that case we have to increase our 500 users in certain time right and then in next hour we have to relax those users let's say till 200 or 300 okay so this is spike testing spike performance okay so similarly scalability testing is performed like you increase you want to see okay how scalable your system is okay so we can increase our technical configurations okay so same is like configuration testing let's say now java 9 has been arrived in the market so we want to perform our we want to check whether our system is stable on the new configurations changes so we will perform a load test to me to ensure okay our system is good enough with the configuration changes as well okay so these type of performance testing you uh, like QC perform to ensure its system is stable. Okay. So similarly, uh, nowadays for performance testing, there is a separate build is provided to QC. That is a very stable build. It is free from all major functional defects. Like the scenarios which got finalized, they should be working properly, right? And performance testing is must before going live and like before devising these scenarios and performing the testing complete understanding and knowledge of the application is required right otherwise you will uh, let's say you don't know your production workload like how your users are coming how what is the nature of transactions in your production in your life environment so you will not be able to mimic the real scenario in and performance testing and in low testing we the our basic intent is to mimic the real time scenario real world scenario okay so that is in production we have to simulate the production scenario otherwise our uh, testing is not a valid testing okay so similarly there are different layers av available when we are low testing so we have to make ensure okay let's say things start from your load injector so load injector is what is load injector actually load injector is the box from where load is initiated okay all right so load injector the moment your jmeter triggers request from here it passes to elb 
ELBs are load balancers, right? So load balancers balance your load, okay? And they have some algorithms configured like round robin, right? Or LRC, LRU, sorry, least recently used. So on these policies basis, load balancers forward the you forward your request to web servers. Okay. So web servers are let's say like Apache or iPlanet, right? So these web servers, your static content is being served by web servers, right? Now let's say for dynamic content and for further more detailed business logic, web servers are backed by application servers, which are taking care of whole logic implemented in the application. So they are responsible for dynamic content, okay, connection pooling, distributed messaging so they have a lot of features that is used to fulfill the requests coming from client right so next once uh, hit reaches application so let's say if there is any interaction is required from database so there are databases servers are available so request comes to database servers okay so here Let's say your SQL nodes or my SQL nodes or nowadays distributed databases are uh, coming in picture like Cassandra, MongoDB, right? So these databases are there and then your response get compiled from here. Then it travels back to application layer, web server, then ELB and then the response is displayed to the client that is your JMIT. okay so this is like how flows goes on when you inject your request from your load testing tool so the simplest cycle like i haven't uh, kept the detail cycle over here so this is like you have to first of all run the test okay analyze it analyze it okay how it's performing okay next spot the bottlenecks so the bottlenecks can be at any layer that can be at between uh, client uh, like uh, jmeter and load balancers load balancers to web servers web servers to application application to database so there are possibilities of having bottlenecks between any layer okay so run the test analyze it and then we have to optimize it with the help of developers or sysadmin team okay so we need to keep an eye on the infra when the load test is going on okay so this is like how uh, one successful test is conducted we have to ensure bottlenecks are spotted if any at any level any any layer of application okay so any any queries or anything on anyone anybody's mind till now so that uh, we can start the introduction to the client which is going to do all this stuff please uh, write in chat in uh, uh, hi this is amit okay hi amit Hi, uh, I was just wondering. I mean, you just spoke about the spike testing. So, uh, these spike testings are done by us, or it's uh, basically the requirement from the client that uh, on uh, under these hours uh, they are expecting right. more actually, load. So, we actually, need to do spike testing. Okay, actually, uh, actually, everything what we are doing is that is required by client only. But some things we have to additionally supply, like endurance test, is the must before giving a go ahead to a performance build right but let's say spike testing all rely on your workload production scenario let's say in your production your users traffic is very normal so that kind of spike test is not required but let's say there is a lot of traffic on your application and uh, it's in form of like up and down 
like uh, at one at initial hour like one lakh transactions are there in next hour there 50000 then again there is a spike so obviously we have to as i said our basic intent or our primary objective should be to mimic our prediction scenario so definitely sometimes things rely on like spike test things they definitely rely on our prediction scenario and client requirement but definitely there are certain other tests like stress test and endurance test they have to they must be performed by a uh, performance test okay hopefully i address your question amit okay okay yes that answers my question okay thank you okay so now uh, this is a j meter like uh, i hope you guys are working also so let's have a brief about j meter like what exactly j meter is so j meter hopefully everyone knows it's a product of apache right so and j meter is in picture i guess from i guess 1998 or 1999 right so j meter is the best open source load test tool i can recommend or i can assure nowadays in the market right there are a different number of tools like locust getling padboy right so there are number of open source tools but definitely the features advancements updates and uh, like easy to use if we talk about these things so jmeta is a dominant in open source market over any other tool and yes like now we can say it's also capturing the market of load runner as well because uh, the jmeta community and blaze meter they combinedly extending its feature through different plugins right so jmeta is now the best tool in the open source load testing industry so the best advantage is like it's a 100% java based application so you need not required any other prerequisite just to install your java on your windows or linux and jmeter is ready to use okay so with jmeter you we can test we can load test any web app working on http protocol https protocol right so the web services like if you want to load test some apis we can also load test that with jmeter we can also load test flex based protocol where aim where traffic is where requests are communicated on the basis of action message format amf right now like i have also done some puc and rnd work on web sockets also so now jmeta can load test web socket based application also let's say if there is some map some mobile app or web app that is involving some real time communication so web uh, we can load test jmeta or web sockets through jmeta as well now and there are other some protocol like ftp ldap smtp So we can load test those protocols also, and even let's say you want to load test some your database system like SQL queries, so that can also be simulated through JMeter. Okay, so JMeter can support now lot of protocols. So it works on protocol level as I told. So wherever protocol is involved. so jmeter can record that traffic for you okay so currently there is 3.3 version is available okay in market and you can install jmeter on linux like centos solaris ubuntu windows even now jmeter is available on dockers as well like dockers you must have heard of few of you guys like it's a virtualization technique like with dockers we can have multiple operating systems on single machine so now a full fledged docker is also available for jmeter like uh, let's say you want a docker for jmeter like it will be linux with pre installed jmeter so you need not to install linux or jmeter separately 
so one docker file will be available for jmeter that will be a linux with jmeter pre installed you have to just download the docker file and install it okay so this is like how what jmeter history is right so here is introduction to jmeter so as i told it's a pure java open source tool uh, it was developed by Stefan, uh, Stefano of the Apache Software Foundation. Okay. So it was just just one question. Yes, please. Yeah, just one question. Uh, I mean, uh, when when we say that Jimmy uh, works on protocol, then uh, how it is impacting uh, what OS is there on the machine? Uh, I didn't get your question exactly. Uh, will you just come again? Uh, basically, what I was asking is that when we say that JMeter works on at protocol level, correct? Right, right. So, how does it matter whether a machine is a, a, a machine has which OS installed? I mean, you are talking about Docker, so it it uh, it says that there are multi uh, there are multiple uh, operating system can be there. So, how will it impact so uh, the performance? Uh how it will impact the performance like uh let's say uh, let's say mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh, no uh, let, let let me clarify basically when we say that uh, jmeter works at a protocol level right now my question is mm -hmm. uh, how will it uh, how the uh, performance of an application is impacted whether it is loaded on a window application or on Linux application, how will the performance may impact? I mean, I was just I just want to correlate this. Okay, no, uh, like these are two different things. I said JMeter works on protocol level, right? So it have uh, I haven't said like performance will vary like if application is on Linux or Windows and that. I just simply said it works on protocol, right? So let's say your application is hosted anywhere like it's on linux or it's on windows so you are just simply triggering your web application now let's say i'm just doing this okay so i'm just targeting my google right so jmeter will def it doesn't know anything he have to just communicate and he, it will just send this request over the protocol to the server. So now, whether Google is hosted at Linux, whether it is at uh, available at Docker, so this is have nothing to do with that. Okay. So it will be just communicating and sending this request to server. Now server will serve it. So I don't know like in what terms you want to see the performance impact and how you're relating it. Question. So, so, so basically my question is then what is the relevance of Docker? Relevance of Docker, I have just given you the example. Like nowadays, mm -hmm. even Dockers are available for JMeter. Now I will tell you, in, uh, can, can we have the this uh, discussion on detail after this session actually, uh, this session? Will be otherwise go in different direction. Can we have this, Amit? Uh, you can come to me. Okay, okay. No, no problem. Okay. I will tell you no problem. why no problem. Dockers yeah. are available and what's their importance. Okay. So I will definitely answer you. So let me just uh, limit the scope of this session to which you, I have planned, right? I will definitely answer your question if some minutes left in the at the end of this session. Okay. So, JMeter, let's talk about jmeter features so it's open source it's friendly gui platform independent right multi-threading so test results also we can visualize instead of reading some text text like getlink is there it's a command line tool so jmeter offers you gui also non-gui also easy to install as i said uh, blaze meter and jmeter community both are extending its features through plugins right so you can perform different type of test so and supports multi protocol as i show you okay so here is jmeter's basic workflow so basically 
it's creating request to the target server right so then so request is being sent to the server through ports in sockets then server responds back right jmeter then saving all the responses and then scroll cal collecting and calculating st uh, stats info and then displaying you with the help of its listeners okay so this is jmeter's basic workflow so but jmeter if we if we say like jmeter is a browser definitely jmeter is not a browser it works at protocol level so the difference between browser and jmeter is jmeter does not execute some embedded elements in your html page let's say javascript is there or even html pages are there so jmeter can download for you but it definitely not execute the javascript because these kind of elements execution is definitely handled by the at client level only so jmeter is just downloading these resources not executing these resources okay so in that sense jmeter is not a browser definitely it's a client that is creating the load for you but yes we can provide the approximation to jmeter of a browser to like most of the extent right we can have that cache and cookie management in jmeter like browser handles the cache okay and cookie so definitely those things are available in jmeter but the, these kind of things like javascript html jmeter is not executing them they it is just downloading them okay so now let's say we come to the jmeter installation part so it's quite easy to install jmeter right just go to this this is the official website of apache right so go to this site there is here it is available apache jmeter dot 3.3 so zip right the moment you will tap it the downloading start okay so let's say now if you are looking forward to have the earlier versions so jmeter archives is there right so from jmeter archives we can have earlier versions okay here all versions all previous versions are available let's say you want to work on 3 2.9 2.8 so they are available but i will definitely recommend to the beginners or like those who have basics of jmeter to work on the earlier versions because on older versions you will you will be able to see the errors or help available on the forums because experienced guys like oh, whatever they had faced in the past so there will be n number of experiences problem solutions will be available on the earlier versions okay so newer versions will definitely not have that much support available on the forums and even some bugs also left uh, open in the newer version so definitely that not really helps the beginners okay so now this was the jmeter archives link and this is your user manual let's say you want to explore something on jmeter right so here is the complete user manual for jmeter whatever you want to learn you can learn from here okay so now once your source folder zip folder is being downloaded just extract that okay so this is like jmeter 3 dot folder i have just extracted it zip i have extracted the zip folder go to this there is a bin directory go to bin directory right and then just tap on jmeter your jmeter console will be launched right so this is our jmeter gui we were talking about okay so now from here we have to create our test plan 
right let's say thread um, some http request right so let's say i've just i'm just we are um, working on some like in my daily basis weekdays batches we are creating this like we have created some scenarios so this is a website which you can practice while going with the sessions new toes.demod.com right so here i will show you like one user will come here are the users you can control let's say uh, in this session we will just discuss this like one loop count right now i'm just let's here's the play button so now the moment i will play it so user will come into home transaction we'll perform login find the flight select the flight and book the flight and make logout so in jmeter you can see the entire transaction how it goes on this was the home page okay user came in now here you can see user is logged in like as sign of is displayed now in this transaction he was finding the flight in this he just proceed to the book flight uh, selecting the flight now here you have just booked it and it is displayed your itinerary has booked okay so this is like how jmeter in jmeter we have we create users we make request right so definitely this all will be covered and we will be creating this test from the scratch in our batch okay this is the website you can also refer to uh, create your tests right so now let's come to the course content part so what the course will be like what our course will contain so okay so here is our course content we will start like as we are discussing today overview of performance testing concepts type diameter history right next we will start and see how we can record this web traffic like let's say one user comes to home log in and log out that flow right then we will build the test plan like how we build the test plan adding cookie support cache support how to save the test plan how to run it okay next what is correlation then we will discuss around thread group right controllers okay similarly samplers listeners so these are all different elements of jmeter and they will create the full fledged scenario test plan right so there are timers to induce some think time to make realistic parameterization data parameterization then some examples of scripting is also involved using beanshell scripting language then some jmeter functions are there so one session is around api testing how we can do aps testing through jmeter all right so we uh, like how we can lotus database queries that is also there right now there is distributed mode distributed mode setup also in jmeter like let's say if you want to send the load from multiple machines so that also we can do and that is also included like the commands required to run it through linux or cmd commands that is we will be discussing right and uh, like jtl understanding jtl is jmeter text log so the detailed discussion around like how you can gen, uh, like how we generate report in jmeter in gui mode and non gui mode that will also be covered okay and server monitoring is also a good part of performance testing equally 
so i will share we will definitely share some linux commands how we can monitor the system how we can monitor it through some profilers open source j console and visual vm how we configure heap settings in jmeter how we can configure jmeter to be a some more socket configuration like exceptions doesn't come at lower configuration so these all things and one session will be around like overview of developer tools as well like analyze different application data under network console and timing staff right so this all stuff we will be doing it right so if let's say in case anyone required to uh, configure the proxy on mobile as well so definitely i can discuss that also so this is all about the course content we will be covering in jmeter in our batches so this was from my side like now anyone having any queries concern about the uh, like course or anything we discuss in today's session so you can come up with that hey hi yeah hi mohammed yeah this mohammed from us okay um i didn't see anything like um using game mirror alongside blaze mirror pardon and okay you you are saying game mirror with blaze mirror yeah blaze mirror yeah okay so mohammed um, uh, like the course is all surround around jmeter so blaze mirror is definitely that's a another setup like it's entirely different setup but yes definitely you can load you can use the same jmeter script right but let's say if you need one session on Bla because blaze meter is also like vast and having different functionality like jmeter so blaze meter is extension of jmeter over cloud so that is definitely a different course right so but you if you want certain basics brush up on blaze meter so definitely i can plan session on that also right so yeah absolutely like like like, like recording in blaze mirror right, and right. bring it to jmx format okay that is one thing i would like okay and yeah, secondly, um, if you need that like let's say uh, recording through blaze meter and getting it converted into jmeter compatible format so yes i can uh, i can comment on that I, and i can cover that as well uh, yeah, I, 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 I let me just say congratulations. I really enjoy your section, and I'm in for this class from start to finish. Okay. And the other thing I would like to see is um, um, generating report in. Let me say using no GUI mode. That is something I'm really curious to know. Right. Definitely. Generating report by the end of no the GUI. test. By the end of the test, you will definitely be able to run your own test through non GUI in even distributed setup also. So I really. So you can teach. Yeah, I I am assuring that definitely you will gain from this course. All thanks. right, thanks, thank Mohammed, for in, uh, like uh, showing uh, interest and enjoying the session. Thanks, thanks a lot. So any any uh, okay. So any more queries or concern about this? Now I have a couple of questions. Okay. One one is see I'm a bit, I'm a bit new to this uh, performance testing part. Okay. So I was just want to uh, I am just curious to know I mean uh, uh, basically uh, how can I able to crack uh, uh, real time scenarios in an interview by uh, going through the, the uh, these uh, uh, okay. course material. Okay. So are we also covering the real time scenarios which uh, which will be which can take her the uh, which uh, can take uh, cater the interview questions yes definitely uh, like on um, what i will be doing in this jmeter is i will be building a real time project only like a small project let's say now in here we what we were what we are doing in current batch is user comes in okay comes to landing page that is home page then performing login right after that login so the users 
application demands okay we want all users to keep finding the flight selecting the flight and booking the flight so let's say now they want this transaction to be loop for the entire test so we can use the loop controller and can control this transaction right so similarly now the logout so users application want the logout to be once like performed only once so we can get that logout transaction to the once only controller so definitely in the in that sense we are doing the real time things only right but yes uh, if you talk about the interview level questions so definitely i can share some good level interview questions to you okay but yes this session will be definitely a real time like let's say you want to loop your transactions you want your transaction to be one time right now let's say you want to run your certain scenario on some condition basis so if controller is also there so we will discuss this also right so everything will be practical and real time okay so hope amit you got it so these these are yeah, okay services. i mean uh, if we go through yeah. please go ahead right i was saying like everything is practical in real time so definitely uh, once you will learn this so then you will have to relate these things let's say someone says how you can loop a transaction in your jmeter so definitely if you have attended the controller session right so you can give him the answer in quick way right yes take it i can loop i can just place a loop controller and place my all requests like checkout or heading to cart or wish list under that loop and i will just run it so definitely they will loop now they will say okay if i want you to uh, if i want to just one transaction to be one time and one transaction to be loop so you will say okay those requests which want to be loop i will keep under loop controller and that is near meant to be once only like home and login these will be performed by users only once right so they will be performed under once only controller okay so let's say if we says we want to loop every transactions to be uh, in the loop controller so definitely when you will attend this course you will come to know okay from here we can control the all transactions to be looped in this thread code okay so in this way you will be learning everything in real time only real time applications real time scenarios right so okay okay uh, another question uh, uh, for you is that uh how much java and c uh, language uh, knowledge should i possess no. to go uh, for this session no language is required to you right no under but yes definitely sometimes some situation arises so for that i have planned one session for all of you because it's con it is a basic and advanced session so here on 8 day 9 i have kept i have i will be discussing three to four coding level examples to you guys but definitely you don't need to be knowing any language specific things before starting jmeter right so no pre knowledge of any programming language is required in jmeter because its script will be recorded through your client jmeter then yes a lot of monitoring and analysis work is involved in jmeter script so that is the most thing like you have to understand what exactly your request is and what all things you required to submit this request to server that's it no programming language is required okay so programming lingua language is definitely incurred at the advanced level like once you will be able to do this so there will be challenges okay like you have to send the dynamic date from here using java javascript functions so definitely those uh, i have planned one session on that also 
so bean shell scripting is used in jmeter or groovy scripting you can use java also javascript also so we will be discussing three to four examples of that also like how we can how we can use the code in jmeter right that's the main thing like initial thing is like let's say if you know the java or programming language but yes how you can invoke that code in jmeter so definitely that will be involved in our session okay so no pre language is required so don't bother about that right okay okay thanks madam okay no issues uh, hello yes hi uh, sir uh, uh, one i have one question uh, first of all thank you for the session okay. uh, you said uh, first of all we will run the test and then we analyze and then optimize so can we see how will uh, we will analyze uh, in this uh, script which we have executed just yes yes yes, yes. you can analyze from here okay so this is the reports for jmeter right so definitely mm -hmm. let's say you have run your home transaction login find there is all your different transactions so here you can see your average response time so it's taking 1 second for something 2.4 seconds 1.1 second so now depending on your sla's let's say your product says i want my login to be completed below 1 second so definitely you are not meeting your sla right so again there are throughput is also available like at what rate your request are traveling right and now let's say i will just share you in short i will i will be discussing this also like how you can uh, how re performance requirement comes in organization and how you can map that performance requirement to your jmeter so that's the very Uh, like requirement gathering sort of thing that will be also covered in our session so let's say the 10 users comes to this site okay so currently it is being run by one user only but we can definitely parameterize it in our sessions like if we use multiple users so we will definitely doing that also okay now you can see here your 10 home transactions 10 login transactions right now find flight Select flight, flight. Okay. So this will I have just looped it forever. So now let me stop it. Okay. Now you can see the login have already gone beyond through your SLA, right? So but in here these all are under SLA. If client says product says they should be under one second. So you can. showcase and share with your client okay login is not up to the mark right and this is the report now in this test let's say it was a one hour test and your client says i want the fine flight transactions to be completed more than 100 or 200 in one hour but you are not meeting that requirement and this is 93 so now you will share okay our tps is this much and we have achieved this and response time for login is this so in this way you have analyzed your report and then you will share to your uh, related teams now let's say if you are the only guy you are the responsible for doing everything so definitely now you will have to monitor the server like say if tps was low if this response time was high so what was going on at the server level so to do that we have to monitor the servers so definitely one session is there to monitor your servers through linux commands and some different profilers as well open source okay so hopefully i have addressed your question punam yes yes thank you sir okay yes please uh, two we have inflex db and grafana setup during the execution Pardon? Like, is it included in the course? Uh, Grafana and Influx DB. Okay. Ah, uh, so just ah, uh, Influx and Grafana setup is not there in our uh, like in our course content. But definitely, ah, uh, like if you want that session, ah, uh, that will not be covered in this session because Influx and Grafana that is a very like you can say extensive level of thing happen in JMeter. so that okay. is used for real time monitoring of your results in terms of graphs right but definitely okay. i will be sharing one 
uh, graphical report available to the JMeter users when the test is being done. Right, so that will be a HTML dashboard get generated at the end of test. So you no need to go to these listeners and configure JTL and generate graphs. So one HTML dash report, like how that report get automatically generated at the end of test is there. But yes, if you need the session on, if you need the session on like integrating JMeter with Influx and then Influx database passing the data to Grafana matrices. So definitely I need to plan that session separately for you. And like it will be apart from this, this package because it's already containing uh, very details and advanced level of information. Right, so that is a very specific thing uh, one have to use. Otherwise, command line results are available for JMeter during the test. And uh, like at the end of test, entire test report is available, right? So that is not included in this session. Okay, so guys, uh, I'm done for today's session. Yes, before leaving, uh, uh, Amit, I am just want to address your question. Actually, Docker I mentioned because nowadays what happened, let's say, uh, let's say uh, one organization is having different teams. Let's say one team is, uh, is working on a system that is compatible on Linux, right? And some teams are working on Windows, right? So nowadays, what is happening to like, now, each and an organization can give the limited resources to a uh, candidate. Now you are working on a Solaris, right? And you want to load test, right? So now company organization says, okay, we have a already built setup. Like there's a JMeter installed and JMeter is installed on a Windows box and that whole system is packaged and available in a Docker file, right? So and your Linux and Solaris system is already overloaded with your other automation tools. Like you are using Selenium, you are using Cucumber. So you says I cannot, I cannot afford to be JMeter anymore on my system. So definitely, organization take cares of those things, and this virtualization technique have helped that. So they will create a central thing. Like let's say there is a one one large box is there. So there are different dockers available. Now let's say you want to work on Windows based system. So they have kept a setup for you Windows with JMeter on the same box. Now one guy is compatible with Solaris system. So he can get the Docker file for that, right? So this is just as per convenience and things available to all of us. So that is nothing to do with it. Okay, okay. got your point. Okay. Mm, okay. Your point. okay. Okay. Okay, guys. Hello? Yes. Uh, Hello. Yes. Who's it? Yeah. I, I, this Mohammed. I had I had you saying um advanced, and uh, when one of my colleagues actually asked the question, you said that one is an advanced section. Right. Um. Let me just ask. Um. If we happen to go through these cars and somebody happens to get job. On Jamie, uh, uh, is, is, is okay. Is going to be comfortable with it? Hello, hello, Muhammad. Yes, uh, yes, please. Yeah, yeah. I haven't gone through this course, this section from start to finish, and I happen to get job. Let me say, um, on Jamie, I will be comfortable actually executing my assignment because I heard you saying, um, some aspect are advanced session. So if we go through this course and we get job using. For us to to execute Jamira, are we going to be comfortable? That is my question. Um, actually, your voice is breaking, so that's why I'm not getting your exact question. So okay, can you hear me now? Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, 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 Muhammad, I can hear you. Yeah, please come again. Yes, please come again. So uh, okay. Yes, you can even write to me. Like you can write to me in private if it's uh, like I guess voice problem is there. Just you can write to me. I can uh, uh, come back to you. Can you can you compose me an email or let's please come again. I, as I am having one another session scheduled at eleven. So can we be quick? Yes, please, uh, Mohammed. Okay, I, I'm typing. 
Okay. Okay, so guys, uh, I'm done with today's session. Okay, so looking forward to have you guys on board and uh, we can start our weekend badges. So please confirm to Richa whatever your decision or whatever you're uh, coming with your decision. Okay, so have a great day ahead. Take care. Keep learning. Bye bye. Thanks, Madan. Uh, it, it this will be a one hour session uh, every weekend or two yes. hour session. Yes, I will be trying to have, get it, it done in for two hours, but definitely I'm committing for one hour. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Madam. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.